The Vindic Lager Fish River Ultra Marathon is a 100-kilometer run through the second largest canyon in the world. This marathon is the brainchild of a team from African Extreme Promotions, Tinas Hansen and Russell Pashka. You know, being the first year, you know, we'd you know like to keep it small, you know, and as you say, you know, get ten uh, elite invited athletes taking part. And yeah, um, you know, in terms of medical backup, you know, we've got you know we've got paramedics on hand, guys that are, are, are competent in terms of abseiling. So yeah, I think all the bases are covered. You know, um, there's a mobile ambulance that'll you know come with you know in case you know we need it. So you know that's important, you know, especially if you've got an international audience that we cover all those bases. African Extreme Promotions is a company that specializes in creating extreme events in Namibia. You know, the camp's going to be, the, the race village is going to be on the edge of the, uh, of the canyon, so you know, when the guys come from, from overseas, that's the first thing they'll see is this spectacle we see before us. And then they'll actually follow this track down in the background over here, down into the canyon, which will take them about an hour and, a, and an hour and a half to, uh, to do. The country boasts of some of the most diverse landscapes in the world and that gave AEP the platform to offer sports tourism not only locally but internationally. This year the organizers handpicked 10 athletes to run the marathon in order to fine-tune the logistics with a manageable group of athletes. The athletes were mostly Namibian, with a couple of South Africans thrown into the mix. Lisa Desperville is an adventure racer and writer that took on the challenge. This is my first time to the Fisher River Canyon, and I've been very excited about this race. I've known about it for about a year, and to get the opportunity to run the Fisher River Canyon, which is normally a five, six day hike, to get the opportunity to run that all in one day, uh, for people like me, it's just the most wonderful thing to be able to do. I've been very lucky over the years where I've been able to run a lot of ultras, both stage races, which is multi-day, and single day events. So this Fish River Canyon race, I guess going into any 100k race, no matter how many times you've done it, it's still got that sort of bit of dauntingness about it. And with a canyon, there is no access. So if something happens to you, twist an ankle, you're stuck in the canyon, you've got to be able to get out. So that's one of the things I think that, make this, that makes this race a little bit more interesting. There's no easy out. Um, it's really good. It's going to be a tough day tomorrow, I think. Um, the weather's been hot today, hot yesterday and tomorrow is certainly going to be no different. Um, the saving grace maybe is that in the morning we've got a bit of shelter in the canyon, the sun will only hit us a little bit later on and I think this year we're very lucky as well where the river's running. We've got access to water throughout and we can just fill up our bottles and drink the whole way along. Desperville predicts a bright future for the event. Trail running is very much the flavour of the month. You know, years ago, mountain biking, nobody knew what a mountain bike is, and mountain bike made big hit waves. And the same thing with trail running, where five years ago, most of the events in South Africa were very poorly attended. Now they're oversubscribed and people can't get entries. So I think this Fish River Challenge is going to see the same kind of thing happening, where it's an exotic destination to go to. Many South Africans may have hiked this trail in five or six days, and you have the trail runners coming through saying, you know, I want to take on something that's a little bit more tough. Fish River Canyon, I've heard about let's go there run it in a day it sounds phenomenal so I think yes this race is definitely set to grow from what I've seen already the organization has been fantastic and uh, it can only get better as we go through the locals rooted for two of their own one of them is the ever bubbly 28 year old Johanna Ashimbanga who is a cashier at the I.I.S. resort the support is very very good like now when I told them that we are going uh, we are going to participate in the marathon for the 27th they give me a chance that on, I don't work in the morning shift. My colleague work, work, uh, always opening the office and I'll be coming late from 8 and 9 there. They give me a chance to practice on the morn in the morning. And you also train every day? Yeah. I do train every day, yes. The longest one I did is 40 kilometers. And for the canyon for me, because I did it last year, I walked a canyon for three days. And the moment I reached down the bottom of the canyon, I was imagining like if I did not carry heavy bag, I can run this canyon within a day. Then I completed by walking for three days. 
But by running, if I maybe carry something light for me, I don't think it's very difficult for me to run the Kenya. This is very interesting, and I think it will be very different from other uh, sports that they used to be done in Namibia. Because when I heard even about the marathon in the Kenyan, it's something very interesting, and it will current even people. What is Kenyan? Our people they really don't don't know what is. Even if I'm telling people they, I'm working at IIS, they don't know whether IIS is in Namibia or is in South Africa. It's very interesting. It's like we are promoting even our industry series in Namibia. This is very, that could be very nice. Franz Amuniela again sees this as an opportunity to better himself as a person and an athlete. Okay, this one I'm very happy for him. I'm very happy for this because, you know, when I joined the marathon, I joined it because I was looking for help. Then now I'm very happy to do the marathon for the local. It's my first time. Then I can say thank you to everybody who helped me to join this marathon. I hope I will do it with my whole heart because I like marathon. Then this is a Namibian marathon. It's not international anymore. Then I can do it because I'm Namibian. I'm free. Then I can do it. I know the mountain, I know the, the nature, I'm going to do it. And even the school, while I'm schooling at the north, when I go, I used to tell them that I joined the marathon. I didn't join it because of what I joined them, so that I can open the door for the small kid, so that they will come in my feet. The challenge is a test of mental strength more than anything else, and adventure racing the world over is becoming fashionable. Ah, you know, if you if you get old and you see the old is the age is coming, then you try to do something to just push the edge a little bit away. Ah, to me it was just start running. Uh, adventure running is, is so much nicer because you're out of the traffic, you're out of the cars, and it's just lovely in the nature. You know? I enjoy it. Done the um, last year the uh, across the divide one from uh, Brandenburg to mile 70, 72, 72 I think. Uh, that was 126 kilometers, uh, a bit different from this one because it was not really uh, the rocks. If you look at all the other marathons, the guys are all the other uh, adventurous marathons, Brandenburg for instance and the ones that they run in the uh, more northern part here in the uh, desert as well. I mean all of them is, is up and running so why not this one? This one I think is, is much more attractive because it's a, I would say it's a harder one because you know it's 24 hours non-stop where the others is uh, you do it over a few days. Um, this is actually an amazing surrounding and this is a world known um, place and, and I think uh, by next year you'll probably have to do some kind of qualification to, 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 to do it. That, that's why I'm here this year. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a professional so uh, I'll, I will take my chances this year. I'll probably never have a chance again. Um, no, I think it's absolutely great. Uh, we, were, we, we were five friends in town and um, we've done the comrades and we were actually talking about doing this exactly thing um, during the second part of the year. And then uh, Tinas, I heard that Tinas is organizing it. What is the driving force behind, you know, something like this? I think it's 50. When you're 50, you have to do something. <laughs> <laughs> Rough terrain, river crossings, wet shoes, temperatures. Um, I'm sure we can suspect we've got a, quite a number of river crossings I've heard about and soft sand. You know, going through soft sand, it's really, it's a killer on the legs. So whether you're doing a desert run or a run through the canyon, sand is the thing that kills. The most important going to be to keep your shoes clean, keep the sand out, and uh, just make sure your feet are in good quality. And I think with that under your belt, there's no reason why the race can't be accomplished successfully. I think there's a few difficult spots. One of them would be to the river crossings. Um, the water in, in, in when, when the socks get wet and so on. Uh, from there on, if you go with the wet feet into the uh, thick sand, the soft sand, that might be a problem. But, uh, you know, one, what you have to see when you get there. Um, normally, when a lot of times when you get there, it's not that really that you anticipate it. It's, uh, then there's something else. You just have to be on the date what comes you must deal with. I think uh, the sand will be a problem. Um, sand in your shoes, uh, uh, getting hurt and, and, and that. Um, there's no uphill kind of thing, so that should be okay. 
Um, the other thing is the temperature and the weather. If it's getting cold, especially tomorrow night, when you're doing the night shift, it is really not nice to, 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 to run in the cold weather. But I hope it, it, it's okay and it, uh, the weather forecast is reasonable. So I think we'll, that, that, but that would, for me would be the worst, the, the cold at night. Yeah. It can get very cold. Vindoklaga snatched up the extreme scene in Namibia and sponsored the Vindoklaga Fish River Canyon Ultra Marathon. You've got some true authentic characters from, from Namibia. And like and we've got a chef based down in eye ice that is not going to run this race. And uh, he, he's, he's actually going to come through. And, you know, speaking to him, you ask him why he's doing it, because he wants to be true to himself. That's, that's the, the bottom line. And I, I think that, you know, that, that really sums up the whole character of the Vintuk trademark. The main sponsor of the event, Vindok Lager, provided some of the development athletes with top-of-the-range running apparel. It was clear from the start that there will be no losers in this race. The nine people that put their hands up to do the self-supporting foot race are as ordinary as you and I, but mixed with that special ingredient. The race started on Saturday morning at 7 o'clock and the steep descent into the canyon was the first major obstacle. Participants had to negotiate a dangerous footpath with tons of loose rock dropping down for close to 500 meters. It is the second largest canyon in the world and the largest in Africa as well as the second most visited tourist attraction in Namibia. It features a gigantic ravine in total about 160 kilometers long, up to 27 kilometers wide at some locations and in others almost 550 meters deep. The Fish River is the longest interior river in Namibia. It cuts deep into the plateau, which is usually dry, stony and sparsely covered with hardy drought-resistant plants. All were aware of the time, 10 hours 54 minutes set by four Namibians in 2003 over a similar route but this year's competitors each had their own and different strategies which saw them completing the course. Only two female athletes took part in this year's event, one South African and one Namibian. The river flows intermittently, usually flooding in late summer, but with this year's good rains, the river is actually still running. The rest of the year it becomes a chain of long, narrow pools. The rest of the route was not going to be much easier. Although the running surface became a lot flatter, the terrain was changing from boulder fields to thick sandy beaches to water crossings in the blink of an eye.
Namibia's Franz Almunyela 28 added a unique entry in the history book of the world's second largest canyon when he won the first Vindeglaga Fish River Canyon Ultra Marathon. In near-perfect weather conditions, France completed the technical and demanding 86-kilometer course in 9 hours, 36 minutes and 56 seconds. This is after a flat-out race with Henty U48, also from Vindic, that ended in spectacular fashion at Eye Ice. No, it was tough, but we cop on. The weather was very good, so that's what our sisters. And also, I tried to pick up only on my way where I get a little bit lost, but I tried to get my friend who showed me the right way, and then we try all the way. Say so thank you, it was very nice. Back hat, back hat, like a do not there. It goes for the arc and better do. Yu was breathing down the winner's neck all the way to the very last turn and finished in 9 hours, 37 minutes and 4 seconds. Uh, I think um, when you took the shortcuts, then it was up 